So, Dr. Barber, let's first talk about just the importance of voting. I think it's always depressing after big elections like this to see how many Americans chose not to exercise their right to vote. You know, I, I work with a lot of young people and with uh, adults as well, and we often talk about the power of voting and helping people understand. You know, sometimes they say it's your responsibility, and it is your responsibility. But also, you don't realize what you give up when you give up your vote. When you give up your right to vote, you really empower other people to make decisions for you. Uh, I often tell young people, you know, if it's power base is, uh, is, is 10 people in a room and everybody gets 10%. When you decide not to vote, it's not that it just goes in the air and floats away. You immediately empower the people around you. So now their percentage is higher. It takes less to get a majority, and it takes less to rule. And so you then empower somebody else. So when you're complaining about what took place in the world, you basically help to do that, to create for yourself an environment that you and your family would not have chosen itself. So voting is, is about our responsibility. Yes, it's, a, it's our opportunity. It's our privilege. But at the same time, it is your voice, and it determines what's going to happen in your life and your world. And so you just don't slough it off. It doesn't just float away. You actually give up your rights and your privilege and your power to someone else. Absolutely. And you have to honor those who fought for the right to vote. Many portions of our population didn't always have this right. Okay. So hopefully we've convinced some people to vote. Talk about the different ways there are to do that. It has been amazing to see how many people have turned out for early voting. Yeah, it has been. I think yesterday morning, which was Saturday, there was over 7 million Californians who had already voted, and uh, which is amazing, the fact that that number is, is there, because people are voting. There are various ways, and we tried in California to make it very easy for people to vote, very convenient. Uh, you, everybody gets a, a ballot in the mail. Everyone has a personalized ballot that really is catered to you, your community, who you are, who you're voting for. All of that is on that ballot. Um, you get a ballot in the mail, and you have a choice to how you want to do it. You can either drop it in the regular mail once you do that, and there's no, and there's no postage required. You can go to many of our drop boxes. I did the other day. I went to my local library and dropped mine in a drop box in my library, in my neighborhood library. So you can do, go to a drop box. We have hundreds of drop boxes throughout the a state for people to basically drop their ballot in, and we're listed on our website exactly based on your zip code and where you are, exactly where your uh, drop box boxes are. Or you can go in person. You can go in person. You could actually take the ballot in and turn it in in person. Or you could actually vote, ask for another ballot, and actually vote in person. So we make it very convenient for people to be able to vote. We also don't have that one and done experience like some states where you have one day to vote and that's it. And if you miss it or you're late or whatever it may be, you we, we allow you to have 11 days to vote. And so those will have weekend voting. It's been going on in the Los Angeles area for the last, uh, for I guess, eight days now, nine days. And so you'll have voting that'll go on uh, in, in your neighborhood for 11 days. Uh, in which you can actually go in and vote or turn your ballot in, or however you choose to do it. Uh, we try to make it as convenient as possible and uh, so that folks, it's, so that it's not a burden to do and it's easy to do. And, um, and therefore, we end up hopefully we'll have a great turnout as a result of that. Absolutely. I understand you guys also have a service where you can track your ballot if you vote by mail, which sounds very cool. Tell me a little bit about that. You know, uh, where's my ballot? Uh, I got my 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 uh, my notice yesterday, uh, and I had turned it in on Friday. And it says, you know, the Secretary of State Shirley Weber is letting you know, and I'm letting myself know. Obviously, uh, mm -hmm. it came across on a text that my ballot had been received and had been counted because it didn't go through the post office. If it had gone through the post office, it would say that the post office has received it. Then the registrar has received it, and it has been counted. So we we do this to you, and and everybody seems excited. People are texting their, their notices, but it takes very little to do. And you sign up for it, and it's called Where's My Ballot? It's on our website, sos.ca.gov. And everybody seems to love it because when you put it in there, you wonder, wonder if they, if they got mine and right. they get out of the box. You know, did, did somebody do something to it? Or maybe it's stuck in a little corner in one of those uh, uh, irregular boxes. And so when you see it, it's a, it's an affirmation. Yes, indeed, my ballot is in. It's been open, and now it has been counted, and I my numbers are there. So we do that. It's called Where's My Ballot? And everybody seems to love it. It's easy to do. You sign up on it, our website, and it continues all while you're a, a, an active voter uh, indefinitely. And so I, I really encourage those to do it. 
I've had new voters who've sent me, their parents have sent me their notice. They got a notice from you today that they have actually voted. And so uh, it's an amazing experience, but it really reassures us in this time of such what people think is such uncertainty. And, you know, you're always concerned about things that uh, that we are watching you, that we got your ballot. You've been counted. And now you're part of the official count in California. Yeah, I think that's very comforting for a lot of people. You hinted at a lot of the anxiety we've been talking about people are feeling around this election. Part of that anxiety is around the voting process with what has happened in recent years to make some people question that. What are you saying and what are you doing to reassure people that the voting process has integrity? Well, you know, the one thing we, once we remind folks, because keep in mind, we have been, uh, in California, we have been sued since 2020, okay? Uh, lots of lawsuits that have come in against us uh, uh, alleging that the voting wasn't correct, that there wasn't integrity, that somebody voted who shouldn't have voted, you know, it goes on and on. In the end, we have gone to court on every case there's been, and we have lost none of them. Uh, it has been proven that there is no major fraud in, in this United States in terms of the area of voting. Uh, we also don't have machines that, uh, that are hooked to the Internet, voting machines hooked to the Internet. So, therefore, in California, you cannot hack a, 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 a voting machine because it's not hooked to the Internet. So we make sure that people know that. As I said, you can track your ballot. Uh, we know that's there. Your ballot has special codes on it. That means it's your ballot and your ballot only. Um, we do our best to try to help people understand the process. We've secured our spaces in terms of where people actually can go to register to vote. Every machine that's used in California, every machine is, is tested several times before it even gets to you to use. And that's important to understand because it's not like we tested 10 years ago or a year ago or two years or whenever we bought it. Right before the election, every, elect, every machine has to be tested and retested. And all, even all of our major counting machines, I just got noticed in my office, are basically have had several tests already so that we're prepared for the major testing that occurs in the end. Um, um, so we, 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 we have these machines, we test them, we retest them, we make sure that everyone is there. We have a code in terms of how you can uh, transfer machines and we have, uh, you know, who handles them, who doesn't handle them. Each one of our machines has a separate passcode. So we don't have this massive uh, list of passcodes that are passed around uh, that people can hack. You'd have to do an enormous job to get our passcodes in California. So we, we, we spend a tremendous amount of time. We have a whole office that spends all of its time basically working to secure our machines so that we can help people understand that it's safe. We also verify every signature that's on those ballots that are returned. We have to look at every signature that's there to make sure it is your ballot and it is your signature. We also allow people to come into any uh, registrar voter office and to observe the process of counting ballots. Uh, you can't get in the room. You can't basically stand over someone and see how people voted. But you can. We have mirrors that have windows that uh, uh, that people stand behind. They can see. We sometimes have put up um, uh, computers on the wall so that you can see them opening them. You can't see who's, whose ballot it is. You can't identify it. But you can actually see and observe the process. And many people go in and want to observe it, thinking that something's going to happen that's so unusual. And they observe the transfer of material. They observed it all. And a lot of them leave after a period of time because it says too boring. Uh, it's <laughs> not an exciting thing because it's very rote. It's very specific. It's not individualized and people are discussing this, that, or the other. And we do everything we can to find every voter. And what I mean by that is every now and then someone will 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 sign will a signature will not match. We will try to find that person and find out why their signature doesn't match. Sometimes as you get older your signature gets kind of crooked and that kind of stuff. And so as a result we try to find that person. Every now and then people fail to sign the ballot. And uh, we go and find that individual. We send them two or three notices. We'll make a call, and we try to find them. We track them down. We really do. And um, and if for some reason you didn't put the date on it, we also go and find you and have you come in and date your ballot. There are very few ballots that don't actually get counted, uh, either because we can't. We've tried several times to find the person, and we cannot. And in when that case, we have a documentation of all the things we've done to find that person. Um, maybe something happened to them in the in the interim. Because 
between putting their ballot in the box and and, and something else and the, and they didn't finish it or whatever. But uh, but we track them down. And some people say, well, why does it take 20, 30 days? You got computers. Well, we have to verify every signature. We want to find every person who tried to vote. We want to give everyone their opportunity to vote. And so we take it very seriously in California. And as a result, when we give the results in 30 days, those are the best results we can get in terms of the the voting population and the results that we see. All right. Well, hopefully that helps people make feel more, feel more confident about their vote and this election. Dr. Weber, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for very much. And we want everyone to vote. If there's any questions, don't hesitate to contact our office at 800-345-VOTE. Take care. All right. Thank you. We appreciate you. Have a good day. Thank you. Same to you.